the title of the show came about, I think, initially me thinking about the gap between myself and a thing, the space, physical space. I like the ambiguousness of the word far. And sometimes I think when, you, when you're making things, you need to get close to this thing. But when it's finished, it, it, for me, it suddenly just recedes in a way. And it feels very apart. The idea of distance and intimacy and um, connection with things is so tied in, I think, with what I do. The paintings, I would say, come in a group. They are made with a group in mind. I started two or three at the same time and had them in the studio laid out very consciously, doing marks, making marks across more than one object at a time, one surface. And I might work on those for two or three days and then put them to one side, bring out another group, which actually is good because when you're making things, it then takes the pressure off one thing. The best feeling I can get is that I'm feeling carefree, but also it's a mix. It's like carefree and acutely attuned to something and also a bit sort of untethered, like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen next. So um, that can happen a lot easier when you're, when you're working on multiple things. All of these paintings that you're seeing up here will have started probably on the ground, and then you'll see a lot of drips in the paintings, and they occur because, like, quite naturally, it's been lifted up when there's paint on the surface and it will drip. Or other times, I might just go towards the wall with the brush full of paint and let it, you know, plonk it on and let it drip. And then that thing that was on the wall could quite easily go back to the ground. So it's like making something and then reappraising it all the time and knowing that it's going to change. Mixing colour seems to be massive for me. <laughs> really, I really find that very fascinating. And I, it is, there's some sort of magic happening, you know, when you're looking at just something like trying to mix two colours and seeing what, there is a moment when it just becomes a colour that you think, oh, I haven't seen that. Or, or you were looking for the colour and you actually, you, you get it. Sometimes I really want the colour to stand out. Like, how do I make this pink? Make it visible. Um, some of the brighter colours seem quite abrasive and quite harsh. They're vivid, but they're quite harsh. They're quite glary. And other tones, perhaps the darker tones, I am looking for those as well, like something sort of a deepness to the colour. They don't have to be joyful. The objects in the room that are um, like the shirts and the sleeves, they are painted a bit differently from the panels. The shirts particularly have to get really saturated with colour and paint and wetness, basically, so that they dry really stiff. If you took the shirt off the wall, it wouldn't feel soft and it wouldn't collapse. It, it stands rigid. So to get it like that, you have to quite, you have to have a go at it. The shirts really are as, are as abstract as the panels. There isn't a picture appearing on the shirt. There isn't a picture appearing on the panels. They're the same language of mark making. The work downstairs on the yellow floor is a sort of new version of a previous work. And for me, the, the, the event of that work begins with the yellow the sensation off that yellow floor should be giving something straight away. And then I think I, what I wanted in there was this slightly uncanny feeling of these things are things I know, they're very, very simple things. It's just a bag, a brown bag that's been painted. But they have, again, like the shirts, they've been painted inside. If you were to get up close to them, you can see that there's an inner piece of painting as well. So they are sculptural in that way. It goes everywhere, you know, inside and out and round. And they are all containers. And then the room becomes the container for them. 
or the floor becomes the container for that work. It's an attention-seeking thing, you know. I want someone to take it in, but it's also quite readable quite quickly. So it's a mix, it's like something that's drawing you there, but actually when you're there, the intensity of the yellow is, is quite intense, so it might sort of push you away again. In the films, there is this attention paid to colour. Sometimes I will um, actively seek out something that's colourful and I'll film it. And other times I'll sort of insert a colour. So in the newest film, uh, it's called Anne Sunflower and it's um, made very recently. Um, I filmed um, pieces of origami paper, coloured paper. So sometimes there's a series of towards the end of the film where you'll see this sort of flipping of colours. And I was thinking of someone like Joseph Albers, Square, you know, and the way he taught colour theory. So there's almost like a little play there on what do colours do? How does it change when you flip from one colour to the next? I think downstairs for me is very much like a room about recording and memory. It's quite narrow, the sources, often made at home, sometimes outside, but very much in my own environment, living environment. And often looking, filming, looking at other things, so looking at magazines, looking at um, other printed material, other books. It's not looking for beauty at all. It's showing curiosity in things somehow. You know, in a sort of pop art feeling of like, I like that. So it's good enough to go in the film. You know, there's no need for it to be prettier or nicer or beautiful. The chairs aren't posed or forced in front of the films. You, you, you might think that it would make sense to put the chairs directly in front of the films and have people sit there. Actually, through the experience of making the installation, it seemed more interesting to have the chairs do their own thing and be definitely be sat on, but feel casual and feel relaxed. They, they're all painted, hand-painted, and they vary in different sort of periods of time. So the earliest chair is probably um, about, made about the same time as the first film, so around 2007. They have a lot of attention paid to them. If you want to look at them in detail, there's quite a lot to see there, but they're also just functioning and being, and very much should be useful and sat on. So the buckets uh, I made, started making them a few years ago and hadn't really thought about them for a while, but seeing this space and thinking of the chairs perhaps and what else might work really well, and there's a piece upstairs that has a small canvas and a little, another little small object and a bucket. They're, they're, to me, they just saw them like interiors, like you could put anything inside there suddenly. It's like once you've got someone's attention to look inside that bucket, then a bit like the bags and the box that's upturned, trying to get the curiosity to look inside and then to deliver something if you have to feel that you've got to put everything on the wall, that can feel quite like a demand. So to have like a bucket where you could contain something interesting, it becomes another space. <laughs>